Hi folks. So um, if you have been following the little stuff that I do at all, you're already aware of the fact that uh, I just recently did an unboxing of uh, a computer case known as the um, Coolmaster H500 uh, ARGB. And since then I've been accumulating some new computer parts because I decided I want to build myself a new personal rig. I actually sold my old rig, which was a 2700X with a Vega 56, uh, 32 gigabytes of memory, um, you know, so on and so forth. It was a really nice computer, I loved it. But I wanted to upgrade and uh, uh, try out some of the new stuff that's been out for a while. And, um, you know, so uh, I sold all that stuff and put enough money together to build something completely new. And what's nice when you do that is that you don't uh, really dip into your own pocket very much. So those of you who might be thinking, oh man, maybe now's not, not a good time to be buying new computer parts. Uh, yeah, that's true uh, if, you're, if you're gonna be paying out of pocket. It's not a good idea because there's a lot of good new stuff coming out in September, Ryzen 4000 series stuff, new, uh, new nav, you know, Navi, uh, Navi 2, big Navi is coming out, so on and so forth. Uh, but, uh, you know, I didn't want to wait, and so I, I sold my old computer, and I'm building a new one. Uh, so I want to kind of be going, I'm going to be going through some of these more important parts of this build, uh, and just unboxing some of these things for you guys to see, just because I know that some of you might be interested in some of these parts in particular. That's what I noticed the last time I did a build like this for myself. Uh, and so I'm going to start, I, well I started with the case, but I'm going to continue with the motherboard. And the motherboard that I am unboxing today is the MSI uh, MAG X570 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Right? A lot of you are familiar with this uh, uh, motherboard, I'm sure. Uh, it's had really great reviews. That's exactly why I bought it. It's supposed to be very, very, very powerful, good VRMs and things like that. And VRM, sorry. And, you know, so I just I wanted to get one that I knew was going to be reliable and that I would be able to use in the future. Because if I upgrade again, I'm not going to upgrade my motherboard. That's my goal. I want this thing to last for a while. So I wanted to get a good one. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And you guys can take a look at uh, what's inside here. And what what you can expect when you're opening this thing and what it really looks like in real life for just some regular dude off the street buying one. And if you're trying to get a hold of one of these, I got mine on Newegg. They come in and out of stock from time to time. B&H Photo has them from time to time. What's nice about Newegg is they try to stick with as close to retail, retail pricing as possible. And getting your hands on parts like this right now is kind of tough because they're in really high demand and there's just not enough supply going around. So. I was fortunate enough to get one of these, uh, and it took me months to finally get my hands on one. So I'm like, I'm doing it, I'm buying it, and I'm building it. Uh, and so that's why it's probably not always best to wait. Like if you're wanting to build a new computer and you, you have an opportunity to buy a component and you can afford it, you should get it because you never know when it's just going to go out of stock and be out of stock for a long time because uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of predictability right now in the market. Uh, with that being said, let's open this thing up. Okay, so here's the box itself. You'll notice right away it says things on it like, hey, it's an AMD Ryzen 3000 ready uh, motherboard. Obviously, if you've done your research, you know that X570 is made specifically um, to run some of the higher end uh, 3000 series Ryzen processors, such as the 3900X, which is exactly what I'm going to be putting in this thing. And a good old 12 core 3900X. I always wanted to try one, so we're going to. Uh, but that's a little bit further down the road. Uh, inside, first thing that you're going to see is the motherboard itself. And of course, it's in your sort of typical um, uh, protective packaging. And that's what it's going to look like when it first comes out of the box. Flipping, oh, flipping over, it's got a nice piece of tape on there. So you'll know it's if it's new and not like refurbed or anything like that, it should have a nice piece of tape on there. Uh, not that that's hard to replicate, but this is brand new and that's what it should look like. Uh, we're going to pull this out of the bag in a minute so you guys can see specifically what this thing looks like uh, before it goes into a build. Before we do that, I want to show you some of the other items this comes with. First and foremost, it comes with this nice badge, which I really appreciate when manufacturers include stuff like this. I love little decorations and things like this. I really love computer parts and so 
Um, I think something like this can really make a computer very special just using like little decals and things like this. But, you know, not everybody loves those things. Uh, underneath the motherboard, which is carried in this nice cardboard uh, protective tray uh, that's really easy to get in and out of there, which I actually also really appreciate, uh, you're going to find some essential things. For one, you're going to find your manual. Now, of course, manual is always uh, available online, but it's really nice to have a hard copy of a manual like this. Um, you know, I really appreciate manufacturers still including this. Uh, I just think it's a very useful tool to have. You don't have to have another system in order to troubleshoot or you know, make sure you're putting things together correctly. It's really good for the novice, especially, to have something like this on hand. So you've got a nice manual, pretty typical. Uh, uh, cables included, you're going to find two, like with most boards, you're going to find two um, SATA cables. And one is actually going to be the sort of 90 degree angle style cable that, you, that you'll see um, a lot of boards use these days. I personally prefer getting the sort of just flat um, uh, style cables because they tend to be a little more universal. It's kind of hard sometimes to, to find a use for this unless your board has um, uh, SATA plugins that point directly up. It's kind of hard to use this when they're pointed the other direction. So, but those are included. Two of those, very very normal. And as for antenna, what I also like to see here is there are actually two sort of uh, screw-in antenna rather than one of those sort of wire slash uh, plastic thingies that you'll get on some like Azeroth boards and things like that. I prefer these. Um, just because I think they look better and uh, not that they work better or anything like that, but I think they look better. So um, uh, to, if you're wondering about what kind of Wi-Fi antenna you're going to be getting, you're going to be getting this kind. Uh, and so good if you like it. Sorry if you don't. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in there. Also in the box, you're going to find a little tiny bag with three little tiny screws that are going to be used for uh, M.2. Uh, uh, functionality for the board. This is going to put your uh, M.2 SSDs into place. And so there's three of those included, which I really appreciate seeing. That means you at least get one extra. There might be one on the board too, but not always. Uh, then you have this thing here that has some basic instructions on how to put uh, certain cooler styles onto an MSI motherboard, uh, whatever. It's basic instructions. Um, I guess that's useful if somebody really needs it. And of course, you got your typical uh, DVD ROM with drivers and things like this. Uh, typically, these things are going to be out of date, uh, but it's nice. I know people like to criticize and say, oh, look, a drink coaster and things like that, but it's nice for something like this to be included for those of us who have either really, really slow internet or unreliable internet or whatever. It's just good to have a hard copy if you absolutely need it, but I probably won't be needing it. So I'm just going to leave that in there. And this is just a piece of plastic. But yeah, that's what you're going to find inside of the build. I'll go ahead and put all this back in here, and we'll take a, take a look at the board. One thing I wanted to show you before I open the bag and pull the board out, sometimes people want to know what's on the back of the box. <laughs> so this is what you can uh, expect to see on the back of your box when you buy this particular item. And so I just wanted you guys to be able to see that. Uh, some of you might be curious. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up the bag here. And to do that, I'm going to use my handy little exacto knifey looking thingy here. These are really handy to have for opening boxes and things like that. Much nicer than using a steak knife or something uh, along those lines. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, don't touch the bag or, you know, don't touch the board because you're not wearing gloves or static protection or anything like that. Um, if you're a fan of Jay's Two Cents, he does a really, really interesting video on that topic. And you're going to see that there's really not really anything to be worried about. Uh, I mean, it's possible for you to damage a component if you shock it with some static electricity, but it's highly unlikely. Uh, so I encourage you to go over to his channel and check it out. Uh, Jay's Two Cents, really, really cool guy. Um, but I'm going to handle this in a safe way just by, you know, touching it by the heat sinks and things like that. So there's not really anything to worry about, folks. I'm going to go ahead and get it out of here. Set her down. Okay, there it is out of the box. And I'll just kind of put it like this for you. And I'll make sure you can see most everything there. Um, you're going to find some uh, really sort of typical things when you first open this up and take a look at it. 
Uh, of course, you're going to have two PCI Express uh, Time 16 slots. Of course, this is SLI ready. It's an X570 board, and all X570 boards do SLI, as far as I know. Um, I wouldn't do that if I were you, unless you're doing some kind of content creation that requires another card. And if you do need to do that, there it is. It is not metal protected. That is the second slot is not metal protected, but the first slot is. Not that I think it really makes any difference. It just looks nicer. Um, so just be aware of that. It's just plastic on the second uh, PCI Express slot uh, for longer cards. It has two other PCI Express slots. I think these are times four slots. I'm not positive. Uh, you guys can probably see that on the website if you're really curious. Uh, it's also in the manual. Um, it has two M.2 uh, plugins on the board. This one is Gen 4. If I remember correctly, don't quote me on this, but if I remember correctly, this is Gen 3. So you're going to want to use your Gen 4 here. It actually says Lightning Gen 4 M.2 on the slot. So the one that's closest to the CPU is your Gen 4 slot if you're going to use a Gen 4 uh, M.2 uh, SSD. It obviously has four uh, DIMM slots. And uh, as far as things go, it, it is fairly basic. Like it has everything you'd expect to find on an X570 board. It does have um, LED um, lights for troubleshooting. You're gonna find those over here uh, on this side of the board near your, uh, uh, what do you call, 24 pl plug, sorry, sorry, 24 pin plug-in. There's four LEDs here that'll help you do troubleshooting. And I don't think they're multicolor from what I've read. They're just one color LEDs, but you can kind of look on there and see the top one is CPU, the second one is RAM, the third one is your, uh, uh, the third one from the top, that is, is, is your graphics card, and the very bottom is your boot drive. If it doesn't see anything to boot, it'll light that up for you so you can. Uh, troubleshoot a, a uh, hard drive or whatever if you need to. Um, so yeah, as far as VRM cooling goes, it's got some beefy coolers on here, guys. Like it's seriously thick. Like uh, I am. I mean, it looked big when I <laughs> saw it uh, in in pictures and things like that. It's big. It's much larger than the X470 board I used to have. Like it's a much larger cooler, and it feels high quality. It's got a nice feel to it, um, and so I really appreciate seeing that. And if you guys have looked at reviews on this board, you'll know that it gets extremely good numbers when it comes to overclocking, VRM, VRM temperatures, so on and so forth. It's extremely, extremely good for the price especially. This thing performs as well as like a $350 plus motherboard, uh, but it's just in the $200 range, and so that's what makes this a really good buy. Uh, one thing not to forget, uh, and when you're building on this thing, uh, make sure you take this off of your fan because there is a dedicated fan for the uh, uh, onboard chip there. So you got to make sure that you take that off so that, that fan doesn't get stripped out or whatever. But on the back here, you'll notice that it has a IO, IO shield that is pre-applied. It's already in place. Like it doesn't come off. I mean, I think you can take it off if you want to. But that's a really nice thing to have. That's what you see on most premium boards these days. And, you know, price-wise, this is not a premium board. It's sort of a mid-range, higher mid-range board. And it's nice to see this included. As far as I.O. goes, you got lots of options for your sound here, including an optical out, which is nice to still see that on there. You have a uh, 2.5 um, gigabit connection here. Yep pretty sure. Uh, that's the Intel connection, so that's good, really good, um, uh, wi uh, not Wi-Fi, but uh, 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 internet plug, sorry, the, the name of it escaped my mind, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, you got your uh, two, I think these are Gen 3 or more um, USB ports, and you got another one here, you've got a Type-C uh, port there, two more gen, uh, uh, 3.0, um, what do you call, USB plugins here. That's where your Wi-Fi antenna will go uh, there. And you've got two USB 2.0, I think, ports uh, on the back. This is typically what you'd use your mouse and keyboard. Uh, you'd use those for your mouse and keyboard. It does have an HDMI out. If you 
eventually decide to put some kind of chip on here that has onboard video. It does have a video out, but I don't know why you would do that. Um, but, you know, who knows what this future holds. Uh, so that's nice to see there. Uh, yeah, so pretty, pretty normal, pretty basic. It does have a, a BIOS switch here or BIOS button, and it does do it does have BIOS flashback on it. That's something I've never used before on any motherboard, um, but if you guys are interested, it does have it. And so, um, if you're hoping it has it, it does have it. So, hooray for those of you who are hoping it has BIOS flashback capabilities. As far as connectors on the board goes, you've got lots and lots of uh, plugins for fans. At the bottom, you have four here um, at the very bottom um, you're going to find your RGB plug-in here one of your RGB plug-ins here uh, let's see you've got a, an addressable RGB plug-in there and as well as just your typical plug-ins that you would normally find on the bottom of the board as far as SATA connections go it has six SATA connections that are facing out another really nice thing that this has is the front panel USB 3.0 um, connector is faced out instead of up. I can't stand having to plug that plug in like this. I like to be able to come in sideways. This is just the way it should be. This should be universal and it's nice to see that on this board. It does have a type C connector which I've never used and I don't think I'll be using on this uh, in this build either but if you guys are hoping it has one it does indeed have one there. It's got some more fan connections at the top uh, so there's a pump fan which can also be used as a, as a fan connector. Sorry pump as a pump connector, but it can also be used as a fan connector. Uh, you got your CPU connector here, just so just one dedicated CPU connector there, um, and it's got two more RGB plugins here. And this little guy, I'm not sure what that is. So it's, it's interesting. It's a little three-pin feller there. Uh, as far as power delivery goes, it has an eight-pin plus four-pin connection option. As far as I've read, if you guys are oh, like thinking right now, oh no, the power supply I have doesn't have that extra four pin, you don't need it. There are not any, uh, as far as AMD goes, there are no processors on the market today that can utilize all this power. Like there's just nothing out there. So it's total, total, complete overkill. If you have an eight pin connector and you have a good power supply, 80 plus rated, whatever, uh, with enough wattage on the 12 volt rail, it'll be fine. So don't worry about not having this four pin as long as you have an eight pin, okay? Don't be trying to use just this four pin though. That's not acceptable. Make sure you use at least this eight pin, but don't worry if you're not gonna use both, it'll be fine. It's absolutely gonna be fine. It'll be more than fine. It's still overkill <laughs> even without the four pin because these things are overbuilt, especially this particular board. This board is capable of handling a processor that is far more demanding than even the highest tier processor that's out right now uh, for a motherboard like this on the AM4 socket. Like it's just, it doesn't exist. Nothing nothing can really take full advantage of these X570 boards for the most part. Uh, so don't be afraid of that. Uh, as long as you have a good power supply, you should be good to go. Uh, well, anyways, I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, you know, I, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a question in the comments. I always like to answer those questions if people have them, because uh, I will be building with this, and I will be letting folks know how it goes and what that's like. And um, over the next few weeks, I'll be able to answer questions that you guys might have, because I'm going to be discovering things about this board, I'm sure, as I'm going along, that uh, you guys might be interested in knowing more about. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to... Um, Go ahead and plug in some of the more important components to the motherboard uh, just to kind of get that out of the way uh, so that they're in a nice safe place. I'm going to go ahead first uh, and plug in the SSDs that I have for this build. For my main boot drive, I'm going to be using this bad boy right here. This is an XPG X, sorry, SX8200 Pro. This is done by ADATA, of course, and uh, this is one of their nicer ones I guess you could say and this is going to be a 512 gigabyte uh, boot drive for me to use in the Gen 4 slot um, and so yeah I'm going to be able to get the full potential out of this uh, just by putting it in that faster slot there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now using my handy dandy 
iFixit kit. One of the more ah, regular ones, I guess you could say. Not real fancy, but very, very practical if you like building computers. This little guy is held in by two screws. I'll go ahead and get those out. I also have one of these handy magnetic uh, bowls that I like to keep screws in. So I'm going to stash those there so they don't fall onto the floor. Which in my house, something falls on the floor, it means that it is gone forever. Uh, when it's this small anyway. Alright, go ahead and get that out of there. Goodness. Is that, oh, it's captive. Look at that. So the second screw is actually captive. Uh, held on by this little doohickey right here, if you guys can see that. Little metal guy. Um, another thing to be aware of when you are installing a uh, drive into one of these M.2 slots, make sure that you take this blue thingy off of there, all right? This is going to make you have a very bad day if you leave that on there. Uh, you won't get as much cooling as you otherwise would, and it might actually, I don't know, get hot enough to melt, and you don't want to have to figure out what is burning inside of my computer. So that comes off. I'll just set this right here on top of the heat sink for now. Let's go ahead and get this feller here out of the box. This little guy just slicing her open right here. Like so. Slicey, slicey. Put this down. And here it is coming out of the box. Very nice. It does come with this little cover. I am not going to use that. Uh, it's kind of a it's a neat little thing there, but uh, uh, I want the components on this SSD to touch this VRM, or sorry, not VRM, but this uh, heat sink or heat spreader um, directly. And so I'm not going to be utilizing that. So we'll go ahead and get this out of here. And if you've never handled one of these M.2 SSDs. It's about the size of a stick of gum. <laughs> so they're pretty small. Uh, it's just very impressive uh, just to kind of handle one of those for the first time if you've never done that before. That just slides in right here. And it, it's just going to hang there like this. Uh, so you want to make sure you got it plugged in all the way. And like I said, it'll just hang there like this until you put your M.2 capture screw in, which I'm going to fish out of the box. Aha! Here's one of my M.2 screws that I just have handy. Let's go ahead and load that up. It's nice to have a little magnetic screwdriver for stuff like this. There's no need to screw that in tightly. Just do it until there's any kind of pressure at all, and that'll be fine. Don't over tighten that. Let's go ahead and put this guy back on here. Because that is now ready to go. I'm going to screw this guy in right here. Now, if you guys are thinking about, man, I want to get one of them iFixit kits myself, make sure you do some research and get the one that has the metal screwdriver. I got a uh, kit that has like the plastic version of the screwdriver. It's still magnetic and it still uses all the same. Uh, bits and things like that. It's just, you know, I was disappointed that it was made of plastic. Uh, and so they do make a nice metal one. Get the metal one. The plastic one is okay, but it's it's as good as any other plastic screwdriver out there. Okay, so um, I would get the metal one if you want to have a nicer experience. Okay, in the second M.2 slot, which we're going to find right here, uh, I'm going to put this little guy in there. This is a much older uh, PCI Express uh, SSD. This is actually the uh, XPG uh, uh, SX6000 Pro. It's definitely not as fast and definitely not as good. This is, if you're thinking about buying one of these, if you're out there and you happen to see one of these on a shelf or online or something, don't buy this for a boot drive. I had nothing but trouble with this particular drive as a boot drive. It just really, um, I don't know, it was fussy and uh, if I lost power, this thing would totally scramble up and I'd have to reinstall Windows. Not good, okay? But as like a game drive or something like that, go for it. This will be fine. I wouldn't store anything on here that's important, though, because I lost a lot of data on this thing. 
just goes to show you that uh, companies out there, they can make good components, they can make bad components. This is made by the same guys that made this one, and this one down here is supposed to be pretty good. This one is not very good. If it doesn't feel right, man, it's not right. Nine times out of ten. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. I guess you could apply that to a lot of things in life. Not just the computer building. If you get a funny feeling about something. See, that feels a lot better without that middle standoff. And so I think that thing was bending my uh, SSD. So I would not put that on with that standoff in there. But that should be good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to put in is our memory. So the memory that I'm using today is uh, obviously it's DDR4, um, a 32 gigabyte uh, kit. That's two DIMMs, two, two DIMMs with 16 gigs on each of them. This uh, is rated to run at 3200 megahertz if you use the XMP profile. Uh, that's not a guarantee. So those of you out there who have RAM or are buying RAM, make sure that it's compatible with your motherboard. If you want to get hit those XMP speeds that are advertised, it has to be, uh, like if you want a guarantee, you need to check the supported list of memory on uh, your motherboard's website. If you guys are really curious, there's the part number right there. It's a roll of the dice, so don't expect those XMP numbers to work. Even when you have a really nice motherboard, a really nice um, uh, processor, if that processor is not binned well, it might not run this memory at that speed that you're hoping it to run. But in my case, I'm pretty confident that it will, but, you know, we'll see. Okay. So, you know, usually it's going to be the second and the fourth, uh, and it is in this case. I just like to double check. There's no point in uh, not double checking things, you know. You might, you might be wrong one time out of a hundred and then you're troubleshooting just because you didn't look at the directions. Alright. Alright, well I think what I'm going to go ahead and do now is put the uh, processor into the motherboard. So I'll let you guys uh, see that process. So here's our Ryzen 9 3900X, and this is going to be the main um, central process for this particular build. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that into uh, the motherboard, but I'll show you guys what's inside one of these things. You just, after you cut the plastic tape stuff, obviously, this part just slides right off. So you're going to have your processor right here at the top, and you got your your Ryzen 9 decal that'll be coming in usefully a little bit later. You got some documentation here for uh, uh, what do you call it? warranty issues and things like that. This is a certificate of authenticity and, and this is a little bit of a disclaimer here. Make sure you put this in the right motherboard so on and so forth. And then underneath this you're going to find your Wraith, uh, uh, what do you call it? Wraith Prism Cooler. I've already taken mine out of the package and used it in another build, but you're going to find it in a little guy like this. The Wraith Prism is the one with all the RGB goodness, but we're not going to be using that on this build. I am going to be using special cooling that you guys are going to see a little bit later for this build, but that is where you're going to find the um, stock cooler that comes with the processor. And this cool little guy now becomes a decoration that you can put on your shelf and so you can brag to your friends, look, I have a Ryzen 9. Now, as far as putting the processor into the motherboard for an AM5, sorry, AM4 motherboard such as this, um, the process is really easy. You just take this little metal arm that you guys see right here. It's kind of hard to see, uh, but it's this little tiny metal arm. You pull it up, leave it up like so very carefully, very carefully, take your processor out of its package. Make sure your hands are clean, okay? You don't want to get any filth or dirt or anything on this processor. Uh, take it out of its package. You should only handle this when you're actually ready 
forward over here so you guys can see this. You should only handle this when you're actually ready to put this into a motherboard. Otherwise, leave it in the packaging, man, because these metal pins on the back, these beautiful gold metal pins, are very sensitive and they can bend very easily and bending them back is not easy to do. And then you've just thrown $400 in the garbage in this case. That's how much I paid for this particular processor. All right, so then you're gonna find a little triangle. I got a little triangle right there. I'm gonna line up my little golden triangle, which is actually really tiny. Man, they've they shrunk down the little golden triangle on uh, the processor. They used to be a lot bigger, and now it's this little tiny thing that you guys can't even see. You guys can't even see it in the picture. Uh, but there it is, nonetheless, so it's still present. Whoop, I almost dropped it, man. Go ahead and put it in there. Now, after you set it in there, it shouldn't feel like it's going to move around at all. Like if you wiggle it like this, don't pull it up, obviously, but if you wiggle it just gently back and forth, it feels pretty snug, pretty firm um, in the, the slot there, okay? And your Ryzen labeling that you guys see right here, it should be parallel with whatever labeling that's on your RAM, all right? So it says Corsair on the top of this RAM from left to right. It says Ryzen on top of this from left to right. That's another way to know that you have this in here correctly. If it's not in there correctly, it's not going to feel good. Again, feel is very important when you're building a computer like this. If it's fighting you at all to go in this slot, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> okay? Take it out, try again, be careful. Once it's in there, pull your little lever down, put it in place, and that's all you gotta do. You know, it's, now it's in, it's, ah, it's in the motherboard. Okay, so those are the main components that are gonna go in this motherboard. I am going to go ahead now and um, remove these little plastic hook things that you guys see right here. This is used, well, these hooks that are, that is to say, are used for the stock Wraith Prism cooler and uh, many other coolers that are out there on the market. Um, but most coolers actually require the use of the back plate, which this is screwed into by these little screws. I do not need the back plate or these plastic things for the cooler that I'm going to use. Um, I'm using a special uh, EK water block that I'm going to put on here. And to do that, I have to put on a um, specific back plate that came with the water block. So I'm going to take all this stuff off. Then underneath is where you're going to find this back plate. Okay? So hold on to that, man. Now I'm going to go ahead and get that water block ready, and then we'll put that on the motherboard as well. Okay. So I've gone ahead and put the uh, back plate for the EK water block onto this uh, motherboard. Uh, but that's already been done, and so we have these posts here where the water block will screw onto. Now this here is the EK water block that I'm going to be using. This came in a really cool uh, kit that they used to sell, but I don't think they do any longer. It was called the Fluid Gaming um, A240, which was made for uh, Vega uh, cards. And basically it's an all-in-one uh, custom kit where you can have a loop that you put together using uh, aluminum parts. You guys can see that's an aluminum uh, water block, which is really interesting. Uh, and it was just really, really awesome. So I'm using it again. So I took it out of the old build and I'm going to use it in this new build. And of course I had to buy a water block for the card that I'm going to use for this build. Uh, but more on that later. But for now, I just wanted to kind of show you the process of putting something this onto a board. Uh, first thing that we're going to need is uh, some thermal paste. So I'm going to grab some really quick and I'm going to edit right to it. What's nice is that EK, um, you know, like most companies, gave uh, some uh, thermal paste with its product. So I've got extra thermal paste laying around, which is really nice to have. So far, this stuff has been pretty good. And I like to put like a pea-sized dollop in the middle of the processor like so. Um, everybody has differing opinions on how much mother or how much paste to use. 
Some people like to spread it on, some people don't. It doesn't really make a difference. Just don't use too little. Uh, using too much is better than using too little. Um, but, it, you know, there is probably a just right amount, but you definitely don't want to have too little. Too little is uh, meaning that you're not going to have enough cooling. What's nice about this block is once you have it on there, then you just place the block onto the standoffs there, the posts, and you push it down, like so. And then you just take the springs that came with this particular mother, uh, sorry, water block, and you put them on like so. And then you screw these little guys onto the springs. There's the block on the board. I'll kind of point it towards you so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, actually, let's take the camera. <laughs> like so. Uh, as best I can anyway. But yeah, there it is on the uh, old motherboard there. Okay, so we fast forward a little bit into the future. Um, it's a little bit later in the day actually. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. This is my Radeon um, 5700 XT that I have removed the uh, stock cooler from. So this is a reference model 5700 XT and I have in its place put a water block made by EK. Now this is again um, a water block that is in their line of um, uh, water cooling stuff known as uh, fluid gaming and it's an all aluminum sort of setup. And so uh, uh, this particular water block is actually not very easy to come by now like it, it comes into stock sometimes and I was quick enough to snag one this last time that it came into stock and it's actually been on sale it was 40% off and so it's really hard to get your hands on these particular blocks if you're doing like an EK fluid gaming setup um, if you're doing just a normal kind of setup there are other water blocks out there obviously but this one is particularly inexpensive and so that's why I went with this and plus I already had a bunch of aluminum um, uh, stuff from EK that I had been using in a previous build. Um, what's nice about this particular block is that it is RGB uh, enabled, so it's got a RGB cable that comes off of it and it's addressable RGB. Um, and I think the strip is just under here and it illuminates this uh, part there if you wanted to have it on display. Um, and so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing with this particular setup. So we are going to have a custom loop technically um, using all of, all of uh, well a bunch of EK's fluid gaming stuff um, and just so you guys know if you happen to get your hands on some of their aluminum stuff you have to understand that you can only use aluminum stuff with aluminum stuff like if you mix and match you're gonna have a bad time there's corrosive properties to some other metals that are used um, in custom loops and if you mix that around with aluminum really 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 not good okay um, and unfortunately aluminum stuff if you already have a bunch of aluminum parts and you need more aluminum stuff is hard to come by uh, EK seems to be the only one that does it that I'm aware of and the, I think that they're ending that line of stuff like they might come out with some fluid gaming stuff in the future for cards that come out in the future but um, it's just it's becoming increasingly more hard to come by and so that's why I chose to use this stuff again because I don't want it to go to waste uh, so this is a reference model um, uh, 5700 5700 XT that we are going to be cooling with water and just so you guys can have a look at how the build is coming along I've already placed the motherboard into the build and uh, I've got obviously everything in the motherboard that you guys saw before and I have my reservoir with some of the tubing hooked up uh, for later and you can see one of the 120 millimeter um, uh, radiators that I'm going to be using and so in the top here there's going to be yet another 120 uh, 100 sorry 240 <laughs> 240 millimeter um, radiator so two so that's two 240 millimeter radiators, one here and one up there. Uh, so that's what we have coming up here real soon. I'm going to go ahead and put this card into the build just to kind of get it out of the way and have it someplace safe. And um, 
basically at this point I've got the radiator to put up top and I've got some cable management to do and I've got to fill the loop um, and probably some other things that I'm not remembering um, so yeah that's what we got going on Well, folks, it's done. Voila. We have the whole build completed. This was a really, really challenging build. I made some mistakes on the way, you know, just with dealing with cables and uh, everything else, but uh, as far as the hardware goes, everything's working good. We've got Windows installed. Got all the drivers in, and it's working. I'm really tired after all that. A uh, couple of things about this case that I think I'll tell you guys about. Uh, you know, it, it's nice. Like I said, it's a really nice case, but whenever you're doing an actual build like this, you're going to stumble across some things that uh, somebody might want to be aware of before they have to learn it the hard way. Uh, Essentially, one of the things that's really a pain about this is how the hard drive basement works. It's nice that it comes out and stuff, but um, it's hard to get back in once you've routed a bunch of cables. It's, it's actually very challenging, and I have, as a matter of fact, I don't even have it uh, screwed in with the thumb screw right now. It's just sitting in there, kind of, you know, sitting in its rails and stuff. It, it's secure, but I couldn't get it to... I couldn't get it to go perfectly into place because of the cables, and I, I don't know, stuff like that bothers me. Um, let's see, what else? I guess that was really the only big surprise. Um, you know, whenever you're working through a build where you're trying to uh, make a custom loop, you're going to run into little snags here and there, tubing not being long enough or something like that. And, you know, I, I managed to make it through just some of the general stuff that comes along when you're building in this thing. It's just, the thing that was really challenging about this was all of the cabling. That the fans themselves um, have two cables coming off of each fan. And routing all that stuff around, trying to make it reach places. I had to go get extension cables and stuff like that. Um... I routed them through the wrong uh, area. I managed to route it through the little uh, porthole that the that the hook for the side panel hooks into. And so, like, I, I sat down with a zip tie and I was gonna start cable managing, and then I look at it and I go, oh. And so, when you have you know your radiator and all this other you know the fans and everything put in there. Um, you, you know, you're dealing with the fact that your cables are basically crammed through a little porthole over on the side, this side of the case, and it just makes it really, really impossible. You basically have to dismantle the thing if you put a cable through the wrong place, you know. Uh, and so I had to tediously sort of reroute some cables after I had already routed them and managed them, and so it's almost like I had to start over in a lot of ways. Anyway. Stuff like that happens, but this build took a long time, man. It took two days to get this thing put together, like many, many hours, uh, many hours. Um, you know, just because of all the RGB, all of the uh, custom loop stuff, just it's a lot of careful, careful work that you have to do um, in order to make sure that everything's running properly and doesn't break. But I just wanted to kind of reflect back on the challenge that went into building this. It was a lot of work. Okay, so I thought I'd let you guys see it all up and running uh, now that I've got everything kind of ironed out. Um, I'm actually in the middle of editing this video that you guys are watching while I'm filming this, so it's kind of weird. 
Uh, but I thought you guys should get to see what it looks like. And so this is kind of my desk area here. And there's the computer underneath. Uh, I just have it all red right now. And you guys can have just maybe a little bit of a better look as to what it is looking like as it runs. I did have some difficulties with the water block. Um, when I'm just noticing that I'm getting higher junction temperatures than I'd like to see. Uh, it's running in like the 80 degrees Celsius range right now. Uh, and it should be doing much better than that. It should be more like 60 degrees or so under load, maybe a little bit higher. And I've noticed that if I just uh, screw it down a little more, I get a little bit better temperatures. So one of these days I'll just pull that block off the card again and remount it. Uh, just be a little more careful when I do it the second time. And it should work well. If you're hearing fan noise right now, it's actually this giant fan right here. Uh, as far as the, the build's noise, there's... I've got the fans literally running full blast on this thing and I can't hear them over other stuff that I've got going on in the in the house. <laughs> so I've got a lot of other noise making things uh, and the computer is not audible uh, in my environment anyway. Uh, but yeah, and here I am. I'll let you guys see how this thing works on my timeline. Just woo, 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 woo. So it's working very nicely, good and smooth. And, uh, you know, I can kind of zoom through. So, you know, if you're looking to edit things on DaVinci Resolve, which is what this program is right here in front of you, the 3900X seems to be working really well. Uh, anyway, if you guys have any questions about any of the parts that I've used in this build, feel free to leave comments below. I will answer them over the next few weeks as I continue to use this computer. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully I can be of service to you in some way. Uh, but thanks for watching, and um, uh, let me know what you think.